Yeah. Okay. Give it to the uh, sergeant. No. Yes. We do have a set of technical amendments uh, for the bill. On it's uh, set number thirty four oh six on page two line twenty one. Uh, changing subsection C to subsection G, and on page four, line one, between of and this, we're inserting subsection A of. So big one, I can't read. And then Larry will say there's a trick amendment, huh? <laughs> okay. Do we? Uh, we have a set of uh, technical amendments. Uh, I'll offer those up. Um, any objection? Hearing on those amendments are adopted. Okay. Uh, Representative Bodie, uh, this bill creates the Internet Crimes Investigation Fund. And welcome to our committee. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman and members. Um, Danny, you got to wake up for this one. <laughs> We don't have nice chairs like that on the other side. The, um, all right, members. Uh, seriously, this is a this is a bill I bring to you. I I was contacted by the Attorney General's Office in their Investigation Division uh, several months prior to session, and 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 abreast of the problems with their current budget cuts and their budget cuts for next year, and what it's what it's done to their division and in investigation, especially the criminal investigations. Um, division and, and, and what the internet and, and I make it plain up front the, the internet is maybe one of the most wonderful things that we've ever created it's, it's growing so fast it's tied economies together for the whole world it's tied the whole world together even third world countries are now connected to the industrialized world but along with all this progress as always people figure out how to use something great and, and, and learn how to scheme and, and, and commit criminal acts on it. And with that, the Attorney General, and I don't know if it started under uh, Attorney General Richard Iob or whoever, but it started 10, 15 years ago where the Attorney General was tasked as being the lead agency investigating and being the, the forensic uh, uh, crime unit for, uh, and lab for, for Internet crimes, and that's their task, and they've taken the lead, and they've done a good job. They're recognized as one of the best uh, units in the country. But because of the downfalls <clears throat> and the increasing number of crimes, they can't keep up. I know all of you get them, and, and it's from... And we'll talk today, we'll have some testimony for a few minutes from some of the Stanford group. And, and you say, well, what's that got to do with the Internet? Well, that wouldn't be possible without the Internet. Those transactions couldn't happen without that. These, these schemes, these huge schemes couldn't happen. Where well, we have thousands, not thousands, but maybe a thousand or more of our constituents that have lost their entire retirement. And you're going to hear from some of them in here. There's some of them sitting here that they did nothing but took good faith of an from a company that was sitting right here at convention in third and had an office next to mine in the bank of Zachary. And, and I'm not saying that those folks that sold those CDs, all of them knew what was going on. But as it happened, I think in the next 30 days, the receiver in Dallas is by July, you're going to see that these folks have lost their entire life savings. <clears throat> then, you know, you get calls every month or two about a scheme. Someone calls your office, send me $30 and we'll send you 10000 Well, you'd be surprised how many people do that. And you'd be surprised how many of those schemes originate in a jurisdiction in Louisiana. And they have to investigate them. But they don't have enough people to investigate all that. Your credit card fraud. How many people do you know that you have have taken your credit card numbers? I've had my credit card numbers taken. I bought stuff in Mexico and it wasn't even in Mexico. They have, they're responsible. They're tasked with all of that. And I guess last <clears throat> is the part that's growing so fast and is so important to the state 
and is maybe the governor's centerpiece, one of his centerpieces of legislation this year is the crimes against our children and children pornography and setting up dates with these little 12, 13, 14 year old children and meeting them in hotels and raping them. They're tasked with all of that. And if you look at this, one of the handouts, it shows hometowns of probably most of you, and it shows that's one picture for just a few sections, for maybe a minute or a, a couple of minutes. How many people in your area are viewing child pornography at that time? That's not all day. That's just a snapshot. There's thousands of cases that they need to investigate, and they can't because they don't have the people. Like I said, their budget's been cut. I know everybody's budget's been cut, and this is the best way we could come up with trying to finance their office with a fee. And I know you'll hear arguments, it's not a fee, it is a fee, but I, the Attorney General has convinced me this is a fee. We charge fees in this state. The Treasury collects fees for the state, and I think that it's a proper bill. I have an amendment. I've got a new fiscal note. Every time we make another step, I get more information. We, we floated it out there at 50 cents because no one could tell us how many customers in the state. We floated it at 50. It was way too much money. So in the House, we cut that to 15 cents. We, we were told 15 cents would generate between around two five to three million, and that's what they're asking. With these dollars, I want you to understand, they're going to hire investigators to, for these child pornography cases. They, need, they have four for the whole state. They need at least eight to 12 to even begin to, 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 to win the war. They're going to hire at least one forensic accountant. I know, Mr. Lario, you know, a forensic accountant is, is very valuable. I'm, I'm told that they cost $1,000 a year, about $47, $50 an hour. They have to be able to go into these computers and cases. I know we might could contract you out. <laughs> $100,000 a year. Um, but they're the ones that have to go in and make these cases and be able to testify as a, as a professional in court. They need another attorney for it. But they're asking, but more than that, they're training your sheriffs and your local law enforcement agencies how to investigate this. They're tasked with that. They're, they're teaching your district attorneys and assisting them. If they don't have an expert, they're going to help them prosecute these cases. So they are the only agency in the state that has this capability with multi-jurisdictional lines. They can go across all lines, as you know. But with that, I would like to offer an amendment because of the fiscal note I received this morning that changed. I would like to reduce the 15 cents to 10 cents if, if they have that amendment prepared, if someone would offer it for me. Okay, the amendment has been prepared and distributed. Um, Senator Lario offers up the amendment. Are there any objections? Hearing none, the amendment is adopted. With that, for a customer, and I want you to understand that this is going to be a fee paid by the customer, but the customer is going to possibly receive a benefit from this fee. If they are preyed upon well, through credit cards, through some kind of Ponzi scheme, through their children being preyed upon by a sexual predator over the Internet, they could possibly receive a service for it, and that's why it is a fee. And it's not the whole population receiving its fee. It's only on Internet folks that have Internet access. And if you're a business, it's only on your bill. And if you have 50 drops in your business, you have 50 people using the Internet, it's only, it'll only be 10 cents now because it's on your bill. It's not on how many people in your office are using it. So it's only one time. At your house, it'll only be 10 cents. Okay, so I want you to understand that. It's not every drop that you have in a business. It's only on your bill. The fee is on the bill. Um, I guess basically that's it. I, I think I've, I've tried to understand as best I can, make uh, have you understand as best I can what it does, what they're trying to do. And with that, I, I guess I'll let the uh, Attorney General if, uh, maybe make some opening statements and, uh, and and answer any questions. We can start some questions, if you Be will. Before you do that, we have a question by <coughs> Senator uh, Martini, or is it? Is it? Okay. All right. No, don't mess me up. Don't mess me up. I got it. I got it straight now. Don't mess me up. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Mr. 
Kevin's I'm the other Gray Evans. Um, you, you, okay. Um, Attorney Cardwell, okay. thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman and members of the committee. Um, we're working in the Attorney General's office, and we're working very hard. And like you and other agencies in the state, we're being asked to do more with less. I, I've been in office now only 18 months. I was a DA for 29 years, and I prosecuted all my murders, all my rapes, and all my armed robberies myself. So I'm on the ground. I'm on the floor. I know what we need to make our cases. Now, I've done financial crimes as well. Uh, but as somebody said, now, right now you don't need to get a a gun, a Tommy gun, and a ski mask. All you got to do is go to the internet now. So we're we're seeing things we've never seen before. And welcome to the 21st century. The internet and the industries that bring the internet to us have uh, have helped us. Many times we've had to call AT and T and some of the providers to get information to get help locating people to solve a lot of crimes through our subpoenas, et cetera, and they've been helpful to us. But the real frank truth is industry has never offered to put up the money to regulate the industry. I want to make this very clear. But in this, in this bill, the people are putting up the money. Everybody is willing to spend a few cents a month to police the Internet. Now, we're making more money than we have made in the history of mankind with the Internet. And we can't pay to police it? Nobody in the United States of America is policing the Internet. Nobody. I left Colorado Springs last night with about 50 other attorneys general for the United States, and they're watching. And nobody is policing the Internet. We need to police the Internet, and what we're asking our consumers, you and I, everybody who uses the Internet, is are we willing to pay 10 cents a month or even 15 cents a month to police the Internet and to help solve these crimes and just simply put the people to work? We're not asking for pie in the sky. We're asking for a very clear legislatively approved every year. You've got to appropriate the money every year from the funds generated for this money. And we have got to put the budget in front of you to do what we need to do. I believe this year we have spent $400,000 simply training our sheriffs, our chiefs of police, the state police. We're even training the FBI now because they don't need to be sending agents to Quantico, Virginia, when we can help train them right here. Louisiana has been said to be last in a lot of things, but right now we are as good as anybody in the United States right now on the seventh floor, seven floors in the Livingston building. We're working, and we're as good as anybody in the United States today as we sit here to this table. And all we're asking is for you to allow us, for God's sake, to do what we need to do for all of us. This is not just to help the Attorney General. We're training these agencies, and we are putting people in position to take care of these crimes. You're going to hear from some of the horror stories today, but I also want you to know that our sheriff statewide, the Louisiana Sheriff's Association, in every jurisdiction, is backing us because this is important for them locally in your areas. Your sheriff is for this in every area. Your chiefs of police, we have 150 agencies right now today that we are partnering with to help tend to all of these, to all of these crimes.
the Louisiana Banking Association is here. They asked us to see what we could do about Internet theft. In Tallulah, we had three people that gave us $90 worth of checks about 10 to 15 years ago. Nobody could figure out what they were doing. And when we stopped from Tallulah, three different people, we located in Tallulah $750,000 when we stopped. That's what we located. And they used the Internet, and they used other little schemes. Nobody had even thought about it. We had to tell FBI how to do it. But we're working. And all we're asking you to do is help us help all of us. And that's what we're going to do. So if it gets too much money, y'all appropriate it every year. If it's supposed to generate $3 million, then it generates $4 million. So what? If you put the money in the fund, it's laid out in the statute, and y'all appropriate what we need. And we should be able to demonstrate the need. We also can help our local agencies through the grants that we have done and the training and the grants to our local chiefs, our investigators, the people who are working in your own local areas. One little criminal case I could about put in my hand that I'm holding up right here in about an inch or two, one criminal case. One white-collar crime we got right now, I can show you, 37 boxes. 37 boxes. Do you realize what it's going to take? We've got to take the computers and analyze them. We have to prove that this phone call came from that computer. The white collar crimes are horrendous. It's, it's amazing what kind of work. Which one of you would want to go through 37 boxes? Well, don't ask me to go through 37 boxes. If you don't want to do it, just give me the resources that we're going to need. We're very conservative. We're working. We're going to do what we say we're going to do, and we simply need the help. Now, we have sat here and listened to this uh, uh, fee versus tax. The attorney, the attorney General's office uh, 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 a tax something everybody got to pay, sales tax. We all, we all know what they are. But in this case, a fee is something that you have to pay if you use a service. And frankly, you may hear differently at this table, but we can tell you, the federal statute is explicit that this is a fee. You can't tax the Internet, but this is a fee for the use to police the Internet. That's what this is, and the federal statute itself is very clear on this. And the federal cases that interpret the federal law are clear that this is a fee. So the tax angle and prejudice and what all everybody says, well, you are going to have a tax. Oh, yeah, 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 you got a tax, you know, for 10 cents, you know. Uh, that's a fake issue. It's an excuse. It's an excuse not to regulate an industry that we all know we need to do. The only question in my mind is why are we having to have this conversation because this industry should have been regulated from the beginning, but none of us knew what it would grow into. I want to make a, another couple of points, and then I'm going to get out the way and let some of these other people talk. We knew in the gaming industry that money's coming in. So when you regulate some industries, you get it straight at the beginning before the money comes in as to how it is going to be policed and how it is going to be regulated. What we're talking about here today is giving us the funds to do what we need to do, but the second thing is accountability of the industry. We need everybody who is not accountable has no reason to be accountable. We've got to depend on good faith. So what we're asking for is to let's put into place the accountability in the industry. Now, we're going to put forth, we've got training. I've got uh, Mike Thompson down here who heads the investigators statewide. We have some experts in here. The final point I want to make is the Attorney General's office is, excuse me, we are the lawyers for the state, and I have put together and have taken some of the lawyers who've been here for a long time, and we've worked this. you got a good Attorney General's office. One of the things we do is we look at 
what are fees and what are taxes. This is one of the things that we do for a living, excuse me. We don't come to the table and tell you something conveniently because that just happens to be what we need in a certain instance. This that I'm showing you is a book of Attorney General's opinions distinguishing what are fees and what are taxes. For this to be a tax, somebody's got to go in, overrule a federal statute, throw it out and overrule the cases, the federal statute, and undo all the Attorney General's opinions for the last 25 years. And I got Rick McJimps in here, Michael Vallon, who have over the years are experts in this very issue. I don't care who comes to the table, tells you different. This is a fee. And I would like for the you all to be able to ask the questions that you need for the other folks. So I'm going to step aside right now and we'll let Mike Thompson. Senator. Yeah, thank you. I, I just have one question. Is yada, yada, yada the same as blah, 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 blah? <laughs> There, there are more of those okay. available there are if you like. more yada yadas and blah blah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. Um, do you want to ask your question now? Of. I'll, I'll ask it because I'm, I'm assuming that this gentleman's going to go into what the general said. It's the training that's going to be afforded. Whatever. I, maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, misspeaking, but I, I don't think anybody questions what you're doing uh, I, and nobody questions whether or not it needs to be done the only issue that it's that I've run into in the materials that I've gotten from everybody in this thing is this thing's gonna rise and fall on whether it's a tax or a fee I don't think anybody's gonna get up on the Senate floor if this bill gets out of here and and, 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 and suggest that you're doing anything other than trying to protect the people of Louisiana and I commend you for that my question is though is and I I keep reading this stuff, and, and 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 the lines get blurred. But it seems like you you say that this service is going to just a specific group of people, but it's really not. You are charging everybody who has internet service. And if I don't have internet service, and you do the job that I know you want to do, I could I could my family could be the beneficiary of that. And when I go back, you know, maybe I maybe I simplify sim simplify things too much. But when I think of a fee, and, and I was just explaining this to uh, Senator Gotro, is what's the, a fee is something that's charged, like if you want to record a mortgage, and that's the that's the amount of money that the that the clerk of court has determined, or whoever gives them that authority has determined is necessary to cover the cost of that transaction, and that transaction doesn't benefit. You, I guess, I guess in a, in, in a certain way it does because when that mortgage is recorded, it kind of gives it, it gives the public notice of that. But but for the purposes of that transaction, it seems like that's what a fee's about. I've got a, you've got a service to provide, and this is how much it's going to cost me. And when I when they record the mortgage, I get that benefit of having my recorded my mortgage recorded, or the mortgage company gets the benefit. But it's not one that goes to gen, to, to general people. This. Uh, you know, no matter what we do, I think we're going to end this, 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 you know, I, I would ask, and again, I'm not trying to cut off, cut your, your presentation, and, and I would defer to the other members of this committee, but I'm sure you, if you're the training guy, I'm sure you're going to, if you work as hard as that man behind you works, I'm sure you're going to do a good job doing that. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that, 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 that your cause is not worthy. I'm, I'm questioning whether or not this, this bill can be a, a vehicle to impose a fee that's going to be constitutionally upheld to the point where we're going to get somebody or we're going to be back here next year saying, well, it got thrown out. So that's that's my concerns. Uh, I, I'm just going to answer uh, before the attorney does. I'm, I'm just going to try to address a little bit, Senator Martini, uh, as far as benefiting. We pay five cents on our telephone for, for folks that are deaf to be able to use the telephone. I don't have anyone in my family that does that, but I pay it. I don't know if it's a fax, tax or a fee, but it's five cents we all pay. It's, it's a fee. It's on your bill, okay? Um, we, we, our cities and parishes collect franchise fees 
for the cable for internet fee, okay? Everybody in the parish or the city doesn't have the internet, but they use those dollars to better your city or your parish. They do work with them. So, I mean, indirectly, you do receive something for it. You don't necessarily have to have the service. And, there, I'm on. Yeah, but and I'm not an attorney. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just saying I'm looking at some of the charges that you're charged on your, you know, I, I have a bundle. I have cable, TV, and Internet all in my bundle, and I pay about $200 a month. So I, I have a bunch of fees and, and taxes on there, and you can argue them. But I, I, I was convinced after they made their argument to me over and over, and then I saw what they're investigating and what we've tasked them with, and we've tasked them with, with your good senator there passed another bill this year that uh, it's a great bill, and we all voted for it. Um, senator Crow to wear another Internet crime to wear wireless. They're going to these hot spots and downloading this pornography. And, and so the, we're tasking them with something else. So I'm, that was one of the reasons that I, I didn't want to do this. I was on Commerce for five years. They, they come to me three times. I said, you know, we're taking on the world here. And, and I know how strong these folks are and what the argument's going to be because they're my friends and I've worked with them for five years and they've supported me. And, I've and you work on my committee in the House when, and we had – what I'm trying to say is I'm not – you don't have to commit, convince me the seriousness of the issue. It's, it, uh, yeah, I think I think the, the well, debate here. Well, I think is, I think that everybody paying a fee, not necessarily you individually, might receive a benefit. The nine one one service we pay for on our phone. I'm I might not ever use it, or my neighbor might not ever use. But that neighbor might might call nine one one for me if I fall down with a heart attack in my yard. I mean, you don't necessarily have to receive a direct benefit, but it's a benefit for the betterment of everybody in there. Is what I'm saying. That's Senator. Could I try to address? Sure, sure go ahead. My, my name's Kurt Wall. I'm the director of the criminal division, and I just want to give you a, a little bit of background on our research on this. And I've prepared memos for all of you already. But essentially, the the preemption issue, where you, the federal law says you cannot tax the internet, the definition of a tax in that very law that everyone wants to continue to cite, the federal law. It's called the Internet Tax Freedom Act. It says that it's any charge that is not a fee imposed for a specific privilege, service, or benefit conferred. The federal law that interprets that, and, I, and I've cited in my memorandum to you the, the three cases that are the most poignant on that, on that issue, they break it down into a three-part test, and they look at who imposes the fee first off, the other two are who actually pays the fee. If it's a narrow group of people and it's not everyone, it's considered a fee. In this case, it's only Internet users that are paying it. So the courts have interpreted that's not everyone, so it's a fee. The third thing that they look at is what is the money being used for? If it goes into a big pot for general revenues, that's a tax. If it goes for a specific purpose to benefit those who pay that cost, it's been interpreted to be a fee. And the interesting thing, Senator, is over the last week or so, there's been more and more press generated about this bill. Shreveport Times did an op-ed piece. There's been emails sent out from Washington saying oppose this tax. I have personally tried to contact every single person that has said this is a tax including those who wrote those op-ed pieces, including those who've gone on the radio and said this is a tax, even including the, the governor's office. And I've said, please provide me with anything, a statute, a case, anything that can back up your stance that says it's a tax so that we can look at it, so that we can review it. I have yet to receive anything from anyone who's saying this is a tax other than just a bald assertion it's a tax. So... To, to another way to address your problem also, Senator, is we purposefully put into this bill that this will not begin to be collected until it will not, the law will not be implemented until January of 2010 so that if someone decides to challenge this, get an injunction, they will have adequate time to address that issue before any dime or nickel or penny is collected. So I don't know if that helps answer your question or not. Also, we, we put into the bill over on the House side in appropriations. Um, we narrowed the bill down on page three, what the, 
what the fee can be used for. We, we name the fund, the Internet Crime Fund, and every year when we come in, if you see down in, in paragraph H, the Attorney General sub, shall submit an annual report to the Joint Legislative Committee on the Budget no later than 30 days prior to the regular session of the legislature. And he's going to have to tell us how he spent the money, how he helped the locals, and what he did before we appropriate any other money. We've put as many controls to make sure that this fee is used specifically what it should be, and, and we still have control over appropriating the dollars to the Attorney General. It does not go to him. And I have one more amendment being prepared because of the physical note I got this morning. Department of Revenue uh, uh, had an estimation of $1.1 million to set it up. Uh, Mr. Kennedy with the Treasury's office has agreed that he will collect it um, and that if, if it cost him to set his computers up for 50 companies, to collect quarterly, which is 200 checks a year approximately, that he'll do an interagency agreement with the Attorney General, and the Attorney General has agreed to that. If there is any cost associated with it, he will pay that with an interagency agreement transfer. So I would like that amendment also if, if it was drafted. I, we've tried every way we can to cut it down on expense to the state, and I, I'm, I'm a little questionable to collect 200 checks. It's going to cost us $1.15 million. Uh, I hope some of them young boys in appropriation don't see this before next year. They better bring their lunch if they come in and say, <laughs> collect 200 checks costs $1.1 million. Okay. Um, uh, Senator Crow, if you have a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, <clears throat> first off, I commend you for bringing this bill forward. I think there's something that needs to be addressed, and I think that probably nobody here in this entire building would disagree that, that we've got to address this issue. The disagreement comes, as you already heard from some testimonies, to how we're going to get there. And uh, a few years ago, and sometimes we have to be creative, and I think this is one way to be creative here, but a few years ago, um, we made, uh, and we've continued to make steps in the direction of trying to address this huge problem, this new area of criminal activity that's continuing to grow daily um, throughout the world uh, because of the Internet. But we've made some steps in the past. One is that we authored a bill a few years ago that would provide for a $5 increase on those people that are on parole or probation uh, that are sex offenders or criminals. Uh, and that went into a technology fund that would that now goes to the Attorney General's office. Uh, it was originally uh, the state police, but now goes to the Attorney General's office to be able to manage and send those funds out, provided those sheriffs around the state buy in and cooperate with the program, monies back to those parishes so that uh, based on a population of offenders in those areas to keep the database constant and updated. That was one creative thing that was done in the past. I think they call it the five dollar bill and um, and it's now actually been passed uh, because of Louisiana's law modeled uh, uses a model to uh, other laws around the country uh, to better track sex offenders. Um, I believe uh, that again, it needs to be addressed. I think it's time for us to pick to take more of a comprehensive approach, um, and with that, not just a, a collection of solutions, but also uh, suggestions on how we can permanently pay for this. Well, uh, we're in a budget year crunch this year, as you well know, um, and 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 that's the year. That's the time when everybody goes after you know, this fee or that fee in order to make ends meet within their various areas. I don't believe that that was the intention of the Attorney General, in this case your bill, I, but I, but nevertheless it's being viewed by the public as another way to to raise money if we can't make ends meet. And and uh, we've gotten lots of opposition calls, emails from my constituents uh, against it. Um, and it's a shame because well, I mean, certainly they have the right for their opinion, and we have to represent the people we, that, that bring us here. But the problem is we've got to do something, and we've got to find a way to do it. And um, um, the comprehensive approach is the only thing I can think of, you know, getting everybody to the I, table. I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with you, Senator Crow, at all. And, and, and I've asked the governor's office. Uh, it, I told them if they would come back and fund this division and, and, and help us out with this since this was – their centerpiece of legislation this year, I take this bill and throw it in the garbage. But that five dollar fee you just talked about to help, and and it does help. I won't argue that. But there's 
9,900 registered sex offenders in the state of Louisiana. And if all 10,000 of them, which they're not, put up their $5, that's $50,000. That well, doesn't even pay for one. they put the five up every month, which is what, what, you know, okay. what they're required to do, uh, it, it raises uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about a million dollars a year. Well, according to the registered oh. sex offenders, state of Louisiana, it would raise maybe 500000 if they all did it, but they're, they're not all going to do that. Well, the bottom line is is that we've got to address the issue, and I agree with you on that. But as far as uh, as, as as this way of doing it, I mean, we've got to come up with a better and more creative way to do what we've got to do. Do you have that way? Do you have that way? <clears throat> My suggestion is is that we bring everybody to the table. You know, everybody in the food chain here, and just really sit down and look at this on a comprehensive way. Okay. The governor's office, uh, the attorney general's office, uh, the sheriff's association, state police, uh, the judges, uh, the DAs, uh, and, and and really just come back hopefully with a solution that we can we can first off identify the best way to accomplish this with with the appropriate amount of funds that we're going to be needing well this is the best way we could come up with right now this year to address a problem that is doubling every year their caseload is doubling every year and they have the same number of investigators and people in this criminal division to handle it and it's impossible every one of us in our district right now have cases that cannot be investigated and they're in important cases their credit card frauds there's their child pornography cases they're people trying to make dates with our 12 year olds on the internet and they can't do it and they're at wits ends about it and that's the only reason that i bring this piece of legislation because they cannot do their job the attorney general cannot do their job and i have seen nobody put together a program that addresses it either on a state level a federal level or an industry level. I'm, I'm going to stop there, and I have a, I have an amendment, if I could, to take the uh, Department of Revenue out and, and, and let the treasurer, he's agreed to collect these fees if it's collected. Before we offer the amendment, we have a question by <coughs> Senator Misha. Um, what, is, what will this generate for the department? When we, when we cut it to 10 cents, I mean, it changes every time we, we take another step, but I'm thinking that Probably estimate around three to four million dollars somewhere. Million? Yeah. And and is this two, uh, no probably around three I think two and a half to okay. three. I, I believe uh, Malcolm didn't didn't y'all come to us last year and ask for some money specifically to fund this? Maybe half a million dollars or seven fifty or so. W wasn't there a request to the finance committee? It was Malcolm Meyer, Attorney General's office. We had requested a finance committee for five hundred thousand dollars for internet banking. Two hundred thousand dollars was funded, uh, but that was vetoed by the governor. Yeah, I think it was your amendment. Okay. So, it, it is uh, so this this would generate about three million dollars, and all of that would be dedicated to this program. You would fund positions, and well, that, the, that, the the general's shaking his head. Yes, she's okay. I got my budget expert coming up now. Okay. Page three uh, describes everything they can use it for. We we would be able to, uh, Renee Free, uh, Senator, uh, Director of Administrative Services mm -hmm. for the Attorney General. Um, it would generate at the 10 cent uh, price, based on the figures supplied by the industry, approximately $3.9 million a year. That money would be in a fund that only you all would be able to appropriate. We wouldn't have free reign over the fund. It, but it can only be used for sex crimes over the Internet. It sets up a new fund? Yes. Another fund. <laughs> Another fund. <laughs> which I might add that we got well, swept $900,000 again yesterday, which brings our total cuts to about $4.8 million mm -hmm. in less than eight months. You all made, you made a request to the administration to put this in the executive budget or put some funding towards this in the executive budget? Not this particular thing. This was uh, birthed through uh, Representative Bodie right before the uh, legislature came into session. We did not specifically request this particular uh, addition to our budget because it was all contingent upon uh, going through. Now, since that time, uh, Senator Walsworth amended HB1 to allow us to have seven positions, no funding. The, those positions would be in the criminal program and would be funded through the funds appropriated 
in uh, internet crimes bill. Without the fee, what would the cost of those positions be? In other words, if we wanted to fund those positions in your in your budget, what would the cost of those positions be? Depending on who you hired, anywhere from let's see, 2.2 million is what our last worksheet for this section cost, but that's more people than just seven. And do you have do you currently have any any positions dedicated to this at this point or do you have We have 17 people in the high tech crime unit right now. Um, I think only four or five of them are investigators. The rest of them are uh, forensic examiners. Four, four investigators. I stand corrected. And and are any other states have any other states done this? I mean, have any other states passed uh, legislation imposing a fee or on the internet specifically for this purpose? Um, uh, as far as I know, no, sir. Okay. And and the congressional, uh, I guess Congress, a few years ago, put a moratorium. On internet, I guess taxing the internet, but we feel you feel, Representative White, that this is okay. I mean, it, it would it would not uh, go against the action or, or the or the, uh, the expression of Congress when they said no. Taxing According to of the, the Attorney internet. General's experts, it represents us in these cases and represents the state. They're, they're telling me now, I'm not an attorney, but that is, they've convinced me that it's a fee. Okay, uh, let me just say that you know I, I don't think anyone on this committee would dispute the need. And that there is a problem. I mean, as, as wonderful as the internet is, as Representative White says, there are. I mean, we get junk email every day from banks and PayPal and everybody else. You know, uh, online solicitations for everything. But uh, should this uh, should this legislation not make it through the process, uh, rest assured that myself and the other members of the Finance Committee will certainly work with the department. If we happen to uh, get any of these instruments that we're moving through the process in the conference committee, we will work uh, as best we can to try to fund something for the department because we believe in the cause. We just don't know that this is the right way to do it, but we certainly believe in what you're trying to do. So we will certainly work with you uh, through the remainder of this budget uh, cycle and, all, and well into next year's budget cycle as well. Thank you. Uh, Senator Gotro. My question, Representative Bodie White, and probably not to you, it'd probably be to their staff, or maybe to you, is did y'all look to see, um, one thing I don't like about our state and the way we operate things, and y'all are doing a great job by the Attorney General's office, they do a great job, it's not about the Attorney General's office. We always um, have different groups that do different things. For example, state police. State police has an internet crimes unit themselves. I think their budget's probably about a half a million or less. Uh, what about um, other groups that we have within the state that are using money for Internet crimes? Have we looked at maybe getting all those groups together and maybe forming it all just under you and transferring the money from those departments and maybe even the, the employees and positions to those departments so that you can actually have that money? That way we don't have to have any more money to do what we're trying to do right now. State police asked us to get their money, and we got them their money. Right. We're the best agency to handle this. If you look, well, at, and this is what I'm talking about, yeah. um, General. Is is that let's make sure that we work where we can if we have to transfer money from those departments. And if, if if you had to talk with State Police Colonel Edmondson, yourself, and whoever else, maybe the Department of Education has money also that they use for internet crimes. We don't know. I mean, you're gonna. I see your your staff person in the back shaking her head, and you're gonna tell me the Department of uh, she can she's welcome to come up instead of just shaking her head. She, she can come talk if she like. I know. Um, it's been our experience that Department of Education has been cut this year. I don't know that they uh, have well, any through. Sometimes the they get federal mo federal dollars that correct. are being used, and they can they can do in our office uh, in our. Um, in our governmental agreements with y'all to transfer money for y'all to be able to do these things. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it sounds like y'all haven't checked. Okay? Oh, we have. Oh, you checked. Mm -hmm. And so... We do get... And so nobody wants to agree with y'all to transfer money to, for y'all to fight this crime since y'all are the specialty in it. It, it. And listen, I'm not mad at y'all. I'm mad at them if they're trying... Because this is the problem we have. It's kind of like we have all these nonprofit organizations that do... Uh, one group does, um, for example, they'll do, let's say, a prescription program. Well, there's 10 different little groups all in one parish doing a prescription program. We don't need 10 different groups doing a prescription program with 10 different funding mechanisms. Mm -hmm. We need one person to do it the best, and I think you are the best to do it. Okay? 
Oh, I know state police was doing their best with what they had at the time because maybe the person before them were not doing as much as y'all are and, and other generals committed to doing this. Listen, you're looking at a person as, and everybody in this committee who's passed, you know, the toughest laws and sex offenders in the nation, and we understand what you're doing. Um, so that's what I ask. I think that's a general approach to getting dollars. First of all, that's within the budget, existing budget, wherever they are. It could be anywhere, so I'm not sure. The other question I have to ask is on page one, and page two of the bill, um, maybe we can get Malcolm up here to read it since he's the one that talked to me about the bill. On lines 15, Malcolm on page one and page uh, two, one and two. It says, no Internet uh, service provider shall be liable to any person or any claim arising from or in any way related to the collection, remittance uh, of the fee imposed pursuant to the section, including but not limited to the refund of the fee to a consumer, failing to identify or collect the fee or any use of the fee. It almost seems like if I'm the Internet provider, and you, if you can answer the question for me, if I'm the Internet provider, it seems like if I collect the money and I fail to remit it, I fail to... Collect it. I have no. I have no. Y'all just let them off the hook, so they can collect it and never have to remit it. What happened, uh, Senator Gotro, is the industry came to us with a request for an amendment. This was done uh, to actually protect them that they would not be responsible for any monies that had been collected. That if we started to collect the monies and it was a court challenge, that they would not be responsible for having to remit the money back to the actual people who pay for it. Well, though in your language, though, it appears that they can actually, you know, let's say if there's no court challenge, it sounds like they could collect the money and keep the money if they really want it. There's no crime in that because you're releasing them of liability. It's, it seems like no Internet service shall be liable to any person or any claim, any claim. To me, any claim could be if the state claims they owe money, that's any claim arising from or any way related to the collection or remittance. Then then at the appropriate time, Senator Gotra, if you'd like to clear up some language in that and offer an amendment, we'd, we'd, we'd accept that. That would be what we call an absurdity in the law. The language is obviously we're going to be able to collect money that is due. If a contract is interpreted under the rules of interpretation in the civil code, uh, that interpretation would lead to what we call an absurdity in the law and could not be upheld. That would be up, but to, a judge. Certainly it would be up to a judge to decide that, though, right? Yeah. Not the Attorney General. Uh, I mean. Exactly. Um, uh, y you know, um, but if we, we have tried to accommodate the business community as well because the business community has provided the Internet services and they have been very cooperative. Um, and we haven't got to them yet, so when they get to them, I'll have a, for them being cooperative, I've got something to ask them. So well, there's a um, few of them I in mean, the audience. I don't know if they're going to come testify. Yeah, but. we understand that. But we, we're, we're not, nothing's absolutely perfect in here. What we're trying to do is get money to fund the office, and we have talked and done everything that we could possibly think of with every organization to try to find money. And now the people are willing. There is, uh, there is a feeling in the community that everybody out there in the community is willing to put up 15 cents a month. That's yeah. a dollar and 80 a year. Now it's a dime. So now it's a dollar 20 a and year. And listen, I'm for what you're trying to do as far as uh, trying to get money to do this. And I think there's other ways to do it. My other, my other question, um, not to cut you off, Attorney General, okay. there's a lot of people probably have questions. The other part is we're going to go ahead and pay them 3% to collect it and remit it, but they have no responsibility for anything, but we're going to go ahead and pay them a 3% fee. Is that negotiated with them also? That was another uh, amendment that was negotiated with the industry, um, uh, AT AT&T. AT first, first of all, I think okay. the industry has a moral obligation and obligation also just because just they provide the service. Uh, they, they should also have an opportunity to help uh, curve uh, people actually using this in explicit ways to, to yeah. harm our children. I, I think they do. And I think a lot of them have corporate. Uh, I'm not sure if they donate or they do things. Hopefully a lot of them. Uh, with I think the Internet is probably the worst thing that's happened to our kids. It's 
it's a great thing as far as information goes, yeah. but as far as kids go, I think it has been the worst thing that's happened to our kids as far as sexual goes. I think kids yeah. are growing up on the Internet nowadays, and it's horrible. Um, so I have a problem with that. But in one other way, and, and you know, um, earlier we are talking about um, Representative Bodie White, and I think you all sincere about what you're talking about. I think there's a way that we can do this, and it's basically voluntary. And, you know, you all may not agree with it, but I will tell you, uh, when my bill comes in from Sumco, and uh, they have this little roundup they call. They collect a lot of money for scholarships, and they collect a lot of money for certain things, like to help pay people's bills and that type of stuff. I always add extra money to it. You could do, and, and I think, and this is why I didn't get the uh, communication people here, but if they put a little piece of paper, and I think they'd be willing to probably even pay for the cost of the little paper going in there with a little box checking off that I agree to pay um, dollar twenty a year, that's what it comes out to be, right? If you lower it to ten cents, a dollar twenty a year, I'd be the first person to sign sign the form. I'll be honest with you, and that's what I was talking to Representative Martini. Yeah. Sign that dollar twenty, and they <laughs> send it to Martini, not Representative, huh? Okay, but I, I'll sign that dollar twenty, and I check off that form, and they charge it to my bill. It's voluntarily, it's charged to the bill. They have the um, most of them probably have the counting mechanisms to probably set it up. I, I can ask when they come to the table, but I think that's a great way to start. And I think a lot of them may even be willing to match. I know that um, some of the other little things we get off in the ma uh, mail like that, uh, where the bills, a lot of times they'll say, if you put up a dollar, we'll put up 10 cents. Or you put up a dollar, I'll put up a dollar. I think that's a good approach. And in general, I think you can get that done. Why don't the people who are making the money put up the volunteer to do it? Why should our folks out in the community I'm not, I'm not asking hey, you hey, volunteer? Hey, so, wait, Hold on. I'm, I'm, this is, this is going to be a burden on, on the communication people. And when yeah. they come up, I'm going to ask them because I think it's part of it. Because Slimco does it. They send the mail out. They pay for it. But me as the consumer, I'm just checking that box, paying that extra money. Or if I check it that I want it on my bill every month, it's on my bill every month. So every month on my bill, they charge me whatever for that roundup fund, whatever it is to help poor people during the winter, uh, summertime who can't pay their utility, utility bills or whatever it is, and they have certain qualifications. That fund, you can line it up where the money goes to y'all. Senator, I, I don't agree with you. I mean, I don't disagree with you at all. Um, but so far, the administration hasn't stepped up. Oh, I, I agree and, with that. And finance this. And the industry hasn't stepped up and offered that as a solution to this well, point. Well, they're getting ready to get axed at the table, by Well, I, 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 I suspect they are, but okay, I'm just saying have, so far that And has, listen, if we have to use your bill as a mechanism to say that they have to do it, if we can do that, we'll do I, it. I tell you, let's go to... But I, I appreciate what y'all doing. I'll be, be honest with you. Okay. Well, I, I know you do, because you've brought bills that I've helped you with. That's correct. F, you know, in criminal justice, and and I know you know how important it is. I know Mr. Lario. I mean, this bill addresses, and I learned from him, you try to protect the people that can't protect themselves, the young and the old. And Okay, you know, thank you. I'm just trying to see if there's another alternative. All right. I, I have two people that wanted to testify. Okay, They've been we, waiting all morning. If yeah, I know, Representative Bodie, but can we have Senator Lario? He has been waiting patiently to ask a question. Oh, no problem. Really on your on the amendment, trying to help help you move the thing along, if you want to offer the amendment on the uh, Department of Revenue taking it over, uh, State Treasurer taking it over from the Department of Revenue, but I have a serious question. Uh, why would we do it there? The Department of Revenue is used to uh, collecting bills and, and uh uh, taxes and fees and whatever else you want to call it. Uh, but why would we move this over to Treasurer, who maybe is not mechanically set up to do that? Uh, I was told, and, and Malcolm uh, can probably tell you, he's been talking to him this morning, but I asked him to talk to him because of the fiscal note that they said it would cost them $1.1 .1 million, which I, I question seriously. Because what they're telling us in this fiscal note, there's approximately now they're saying there's approximately 50 providers, and they get they're they're mailing out a check quarterly, four checks a year, which would be approximately 200 checks. And and I understand you what, would have what some. What does the treasurer tell you he could do it for? He did not give me a specific dollar amount, Senator Lario, but he said that he thought they can do it for less than this. I talked to uh, Ron well, Henson. Is less 1.2 million instead of 1.3 million, or what, what's the? He did not specify a dollar amount. I could try to work on getting that dollar amount for you. But what I did was, since it was such a, a high cost and revenue did request you know, that, that, that they yeah, needed one, to be out of this, I moved it to Treasury. That, uh, possibly is uh, reducing that 3% to the uh, Internet provider, uh, maybe splitting that between the Department of Revenue and, the, uh, and those folks and have them do it. But I, maybe we could talk about that between here and the floor and not, uh, uh, you know, so we can get some hard numbers as to what, 
if Treasury can do it much cheaper and, and I don't have a quarter, you correct. Uh, probably can do this on a quicken program, collect from 40 people. That's exactly. That's a hard thing to do. And, uh, and they collect fees for presents. Send a guy like Bodie White out to break their legs if they don't pay it, you know, kind of stuff. So. <laughs> he, he's a pit bull. You're right. He, he can is, do it. He is a good man. Thank you. Set. I got. I got a. I have a, a question, um, Malcolm. You you indicated that you worked with uh, the carriers on that particular piece. That uh, one in, in particular. It was AT and T. Wait, wait. Senator Gotro uh, uh, mentioned as it relates to the uh, the carrier not being liable to collect the fee, yes. and so you said you worked on that particular piece. Um, and I, I guess I'm a little concerned that you allowed for an amendment um, to go on to this bill that you knew wouldn't work. No, ma'am, we thought it would work. I well, didn't, you, didn't think that it would not work, and Senator Gotro was the first to bring that to our attention. We amended it in committee, and they were uh, perfectly fine with it, and we felt as though that if – if they did not want to be liable, if they were collecting, I think that they had some instance in the past where they had collected some fees and they had to return the money, and they didn't want to be liable for that. That's, and that was only because of the, at the first stages when we would be collecting the money and if there were some court challenge, they did not want to be liable, saying that the, the person who they collected the fee from, the Internet fee, the 15 cents, that they wouldn't be able to go and sue AT&T for 15 cents. The other question I have, I, I have additional questions, but I'll hold them until I hear both sides. Um, the other question I have is we were given, um, I guess, a handwritten, I don't know what this is. This, that's, I, I saw you look at it, and I grabbed it because I wanted to address it before I left the table. Well, let me this, this, this is a 13-year-old, to give you the background. Her stepfather was repeatedly raping her. And you say, what's that got to do with the Internet? That was seized in a search warrant because he was downloading child pornography on his Internet, and it was seized here in Louisiana. That's that's where this came from. This was a 13-year-old's handwritten letter. handwritten letter that was seized on his computer? On, no, at, in her bed at the house it was, during a search warrant to seize his computer. But this was not an Internet related case. Yes, they were there with a search warrant to seize his computer because he had been downloading child pornography. And while running a search warrant, they found this letter from his stepdaughter where he had been repeatedly raping her. So it is related. Okay, um, Senator Crow. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you, you mentioned a while ago, uh, Bodie, that, that we, we, we ought to be thinking about some other ways, if not this way. And one thing that, that Senator Gotro had brought up, and I'll just add to that, <clears throat> uh, right now on our utility bills, we, we have a checkoff box where we can actually check off and put, you know, add a dollar or whatever the amount is so that we can, uh, that goes to a fund to help those individuals who can't afford their utility bills every month. That's something that's already happening right now, and it's on a voluntary basis. Why couldn't we have a get the industry to work with you to have a voluntary checkoff box on your monthly internet bill, your telephone bill, uh, for whatever amount that we determine, and have that go and dedicate it to the to to this fund. I know that it's a little bit more of a a risk and a little bit more difficult to determine how much activity you're going to get, but. I don't think we have a disagreement on what we have to do. I think we have a disagreement on how we're going to pay for it. And so, I, you know, I'm glad Senator Grotra brought it up, but what, what about the possibility of doing that uh, and, and, and seeing how it works for a year or two or whatever and, 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 and go from there? And then we can ask that same question to, um, to industry and see what their reaction is to, but what do you feel? Senator Crow, I think that, that that's a very admirable thing, you know, to look at that type of possibility. But we cannot protect the budget in the Attorney General's office on a, a income tax or a checkoff box. It'd be very hard for us to budget off the fact that we've got a volunteer people who are going to voluntarily put money in. But but even right now with your bill, you really don't have a fix on exactly what amount's going to be coming in because I've heard it where I've heard it. <clears throat> Well, the, Maybe the, the different the physical dollars note we different. got this morning was. Bodie, let me let me finish up too. I'm not even sure how you how do you go about collecting this. Uh, I mean, I saw in the fiscal note you've got so many households, so many internet ISP companies, forty or so. You've got uh, you've got uh, 1.8 million households, of which 75 percent 
uh, or sent your uh, bills in Louisiana, how uh, you're going to have to have access or spe special privilege to the database? <laughs> we don't have a quorum. Uh, <clears throat> to um, to all those uh, ISPs. In order to be able to determine. Would you like me to chair it, Madam Chairman? <laughs> I'm, I'm not this, trying. This, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm this is a copy of a bill right here. And if you look on it, Senator, there, there's FCC fee of $0.07, cents, a franchise fee of $3.37. Okay. And and it would just be a line item on there. I think industry will tell you that that's, that that's uh, second thing. It would be a line item on your bill, and it would, if it, the bill stays like it is, it would be a ten cents charge, just like that seven cents FCC mm -hmm. fee. And it'd be ten cents show up right there. It'd be added into your monthly bill. So, so, and they would remit. That would be just like they send that franchise fee to either the parish or the city that they're sending it to. They would, they would send that. Ten cents to the uh, Treasury's office if our amendment goes on, or to the uh, Department of Revenue, and it would be remitted over to that fund. I guess, Representative White, what we're trying to tell you is that we all agree with what needs to be done. Yes, sir. But we we cannot agree on the funding mechanism. I, I'm just answering and, your and, question. You asked how would you do it, and that's how you would do it. Oh, right. Well, you can do the same thing as we do with utility bills. And that you can have a voluntary checkoff. Now we've gotten most emails came in and opposed to this because they consider it a tax. Well, but there's some people that send emails in in favor of it because they saw the dire need for having to do something. So I think the public is mixed, albeit more opposed. You know, from what I've gotten, um, and I think we can hit the happy medium by by maybe looking at or, or amending the bill in such a way that it would make it voluntary. I know it's a little riskier from budgeting standpoint, but after it's about very a year, risky, sir. after about a year, maybe you can develop and see some trends coming. If, I don't if, know. if we had it voluntarily, we hired the proper staff to be able to start working on this, and if, and and it's and the monies did not come in, could we come back to y'all for the funding? I think it was, it's a first good step to to try that. You're more than welcome to come. We tried. You can come back anytime. Yeah, we tried that already, and we, we don't have the funding. That's the my funding point. That's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, you know, members of the committee, I, is that we did try to come. We don't have the funding right now. I will tell right you now. this. Me, I can't speak for the rest of them up here, but I can tell you this. I am passionate about trying to do something to protect our kids. I am passionate, just as the Eternal Journal is, just like everybody else here is. We've got to do something. And this problem is much bigger than just this bill. It's 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 an epidemic. Uh, we've got to do something, and uh, and I'd hate to say uh, see this bill not get out of committee, simply because we couldn't agree on some sort of funding mechanism. And I would strongly recommend that if if there was a way that you all would be open, and we still have to question the opposition, we still have to talk to industry. If yeah, there's a way that we can bill? get <laughs> something, get this bill out of here with some sort of a voluntary way to fund it. I think we're heading in the right direction. It may not be what you want, but we're heading in the right direction. Thank you. Um, let's let's go ahead and uh, we have a we have a, we've heard a, a lot from the um, uh, people in support. Can we go ahead and hear the uh, opposition? At yes. Time? And at, at, at what time? I have two people I wanted to talk, but if you'd want to do it now or later on my closing, whatever you'd like, I'm I'm, I'm at your discretion. Okay. So. Who else do you have? I have a couple of victims that wanted to speak. They've been sitting here. Uh, Let's see. Do we have a card in support? That mic is not this on the, for them. The presentation. Okay. I have uh, Kim Scullin and Dr. John Wade, and I'm going to ask them to keep it to less than five minutes. Okay. They can come to the table. And then Mike Thompson, I think he's going to break down some of the numbers for the investigation, and then we'll be through with this part of the presentation unless you want that on closing. Okay. Hi, I'm Kim, Kim Scullin, and thank you for listening to me. I came here today in support of this bill, and I sat back and kind of listened to y'all, and I'm very confused because as we sit here and talk about how we're going to fund this, People are being victimized. I mean, we can debate forever. Um, I came here as a woman that as a young girl from the age of five to nine, I was sexually abused. I was forced to watch my sister be abused. 
I've spent years with these vivid pictures in my mind, but I'm also extremely grateful and thankful to God that back then there weren't digital cameras and camcorders. There wasn't the Internet because the pictures are only in my mind and they're not out there on the World Wide Web where I would continually be abused every single day. I also sit here as a mother of five children. You know, when I was a little girl with my hair pulled back with a bow bigger than my head, there was nothing I could do. But I was determined I would protect my children. But I had no idea or concept of the Internet arriving. So I look back and say, how do I protect my children now that our computers, you know, the last 20 years our lives revolve around the computers? You know, I can keep people from coming in my house, but how do I keep this insidious predator that comes in my living room, in my bedrooms, in my kitchens, that disguise themselves as classmates, as people that can befriend them with their naive trust? My 15-year-old daughter came to me one day and was fussing because she thought I was being unfair and overly strict on her computer use. And she said, well, if a sexual predator gets me, it's God's will. And I told her, I said, that's my job as a parent is to try to prevent that, and it would never be God's will. But I don't know how to protect her. And we're going to debate 10 cents a month. Then as a provider for my family, I have always worked. I have never asked for anything from anyone. My first husband got diagnosed with cancer, and within 10 months, he had died. But he died with some peace knowing he had a life insurance policy that could protect and educate and pay the medical expenses of our children. Okay, so I met with my lawyer and my exec the executors and all, and we met with Stanford financial brokers. And we put money in Stanford CDs. I was dealing with an American company regulated in America. I went on the Internet and checked this company all out. I talked to people in the community. And I put this money where I thought it was safe, where I was told it was insured, so I could provide for my kids. I could give them that medical care. I could educate them. You know, and I was robbed. It was no different than if somebody stuck a gun to my head. I communicated. The, the, I met with that broker one time. After that, it was all done over the Internet. Never saw him again until after all this occurred. All right. I trusted these, the American government and the regulators. You know, I don't understand how this can occur, and I think we have to have investigators out there doing something about it. You know, um, I've never spoken about some of these things private, publicly. Most of it n very, with very few people privately. You know, I don't look at myself as a victim. I am not a victim. I was victimized, and if I become a victim, then they have won. Um, I'm an average, middle-class American woman, a wife, a mother, a nurse, a neighbor. That person you see in the carpool line, if it could happen to me here in Little Baton Rouge, it could happen to anybody, and it has happened to your constituents. You just don't know. People don't get out and talk about these kind of things. But they depend on you, the elected officials. You all have the responsibility and the ability to protect our children, to protect that little girl with that bow that's bigger than her head, to protect those teenagers that just have no idea what's out there, and to protect our retirements. I mean, I pay on all our phones, because now we got these teenagers with phones, 50 cents a month, so that when I call 911, they can find me. Now, what are the chances that whoever's calling 911 is not going to be able to tell them their location? That's slim to none, but what are the chances that one of us or one of you or one of your family members are going to somehow or another be victimized over the Internet? You know, I, I, do, I don't understand how an uh, office could fund something on a checkoff box. I mean, if I was a competent investigator, do you think I would take a job that I may or may not have, depending on who checked it off? Just my opinion. Thank you. John, if you can. Yeah, John Wade, Dr. Wade. I'm a veterinarian over in Senator Crow's district. Uh, I'm here uh, representing the Louisiana Stanford Victims Group. Uh, Senator Crow, I would just point out I am aware of two um, uh, sex offenses right there in Covington that were tied directly to the Internet. 
And for me, and that's more than anybody ought to know about. It's just, it, I think that's just an indicator of how prevalent it is. Uh, I am going to, not to diminish the, the, thrust of the of the bill regarding the pornography and sex offenses I, I would focus more on the financial fraud section uh, the it, it, there are thousands of, of Louisiana and US citizens that have been defrauded by the Stanford group companies they're victims in 35 states with the most affected state being Louisiana I, I am certain that every one of the people on this committee have have got constituents that have been devastated by this Stanford fraud. The large majority of the fraud victims have lost their retirement funds, their whole entire retirement funds, as the average U.S. retirees were the ones that were targeted with Stanford. It, it's an incredibly disturbing situation that's that's actually escalated to an emergency uh, for for most of those affected. Many are now losing their homes. They're moving in with children. They can't pay medical bills. Some can't buy groceries, and most are simply just too old to go back to work and start over. Uh, my company uh, in St. Tammany Parish, after 20 years of being in business, lost its entire pension fund, affecting not only myself but all of my employees. In the in this Stanford fraud. Uh, of there were s over seven billion dollars lost in, in this fraud. It's estimated that over a billion of that came from Louisiana. It's clear that every bit of these funds were wired and rewired, making them very difficult to trace. In my case, my company funds never reached the destination bank that was designated on the wiring instructions that I signed. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know where the money is today. Uh, wiring funds fraudulently is an internet crime. It's also clear that Stanford's uh, intricate internet system was used to communicate fraudulent activity. It takes time and money to trace these things. In the Stanford debacle, the Louisiana State Chartered Trust Company. Uh, which is right here in Baton Rouge, has been nationally nicknamed as the toxic waste dump for Stanford. Properly investigated, much of these types of problems could be unraveled. What a godsend it would be to restore the lives of these Louisiana citizens. Uh, regarding the subject matter of this bill, in coming years the Internet very likely provides the largest opportunity of all available settings in this country for a, a wide variety of criminal activity. I do not believe that it is unreasonable to expect users of a particular product to pay for the effort to keep that product free of crime, particularly when the individual cost is so small and shared among so many. The Internet is wide open for all forms of criminal activity. Let's get Louisiana ahead of the curve instead of getting these embarrassing nicknames that we've got out there nationally. And let's get ahead of the curve. It's simple. It's our, our state and our community have got to protect the citizens. Yeah, and, and I would just comment that, that I've, I've seen in this, in this as this panel debates how to pay for and let's try this and let's try that. I, I will tell you that in the Stanford debacle, the, from the SEC on down, there have been regulatory problems with that. The, the SEC has been investigating the Stanford company for about five years and with no action. So I, I have seen what failure to act can do. The, the regulators failed to act. Because of that, there was over $4 billion put into the Stanford Group companies and lost by hundreds of Louisiana citizens. If somebody would have acted five years ago, this never would have happened. So I urge you to please act. If, we, if it takes 10 cents a month to get this thing started, to get it committed, I, I strongly urge you to do that. If a change needs to be made later, let's make the change later. But let's get something started and get it started now.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Kim wanted to say one more statement, and I'm through. I wanted to say that I've gone to every state and federal agency that would let me in their door. I spent two weeks pounding the street, even in Washington, D.C. The Attorney General's office here is the only one that listened and the only one that stepped up to the plate to start investigating the Stanford. Um, but they don't have the money or the investigators to handle something this big. Well, will they ever have the money or enough investigators to handle something this big when the federal government can do it? I didn't say they couldn't. I said okay. I haven't said they would. Okay, thank you. Well, we have the um, thank you for your testimony. Can we go ahead and have the um, uh, opposition? Madam Chair, members of the committee, my name is Rob Rieger. I practice law with the firm of Adams and Reese. We proudly represent the members of the Louisiana Cable and Telecommunications Association and the million-plus customers that uh, uh, subscribe to our services at this time, most of which do include Internet-type services. Uh, my introductory remarks are simply this. There is no one in this room that is against what the objectives of this legislation is. It is simply a matter of how you fund it. We are parents, we are grandparents, our loved ones are the victims of the abuse at many levels, children, the elderly, financial fraud, identity theft, all of the things that are loathsome but are part of the world that we live in today. Yeah, so from the get-go, anyone at this table, anyone in this room on the opposite sides of this philosophical funding issue, we all share the same common goals and objectives. We commend the Attorney General for the things the Attorney General has done. We have partnered and will continue to partner with the Attorney General to accomplish the goals of making our place, our Internet, and our state a safer place to be in. But we have fundamental problems with the funding mechanism that have been discussed. In the Internet Non-Discrimination Tax Act. The law is very specific. A tax is defined as any charge imposed by a governmental entity for the purpose of generating revenues for governmental purposes. There's no doubt that what's going on here is exactly that. Okay, and here's the language that the Attorney General concentrated on. And, and, two-step process, not a fee imposed for a specific privilege, service, or benefit concern. So the Attorney General, any state, you know, passing legislation in this area, number one, if it raises revenues, it's already, already suspect, then they have to prove that it is a fee conferring a specific service or benefit included. No other state in the nation has passed this. This legislation has been around since 1996. Uh, brains a lot smarter than mine or uh, if this would have been a good idea, something would have worked, we would have seen a law passed, and we would have seen uh, litigation that would give guidance. With all due deference to the, the fine lawyers on the Attorney General's staff, the precedents they cite to you as allowing this sort of thing and using the fee net, none of that had to do with Internet service tax or anything like that. These are precedents having to do with other types of charges that legislatures have imposed. There is no jurisprudence on this right now. We believe it's very clear that the law is unfortunately clear and the Congress has tied our hands in this area. So the first order of business would be we believe go to the Congress and ask them to change the law to give us the ability to do this or fund it at a level that will allow this to be properly done in this area. Uh, with me today are three individuals who testify against us. One is Mr. Tom Giovetti. He is the director of the Institute for Policy Innovations. Mr. Patrick Gleason, Americans for Tax Reform and also Mr. Dwayne Coward, who represents the wireless carriers. And I just ask these folks to briefly hit this a lick. Thank you, Madam Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Tom Giovanetti. I'm the president of the Institute for Policy Innovation. We are a free market think tank based in Dallas. We're 22 years old. We follow a variety of issues, including, I should say, Internet child safety. In fact, last year, the attorneys general, 49 of the 50 attorneys general, assembled a special task force called the Internet Safety Technical Task Force, and my organization was asked to serve on that committee. We met for one year last year. Uh, I've seen horrible things. I, I've seen horrible things worse than any that have been described here today on the Internet. Uh, in fact, during one of the presentations, every four or five slides, they would show a picture of kittens rolling around playing with a ball of yarn, just so we could sort of purge our minds of some of the things that we have seen. So no one on this issue 
dismisses the importance of doing something. The question really is simply about the funding mechanism. And listening to some of the questions that were asked, it is clear that the committee members' instincts are correct, and that is that it simply cannot be paid for this way. Listening to the Attorney General's uh, many staff members, it's clear that they know that litigation is coming. They're already braced in a number of ways for litigation because they know it's coming. Ask yourselves this question. In the last 12 years, why has no state attempted to do this? Your colleagues in the other 49 states are just as concerned about this as you are. Your colleagues in the other 49 states are just as pressed for money as you are. Yet no state in 12 years has attempted to do this. And the reason that it is clear, in fact, one of my employees served on the committee that drafted the Internet Tax Freedom Act. And it was drafted specifically to prohibit this type of thing a discriminatory fee that is placed on Internet access. The phrase Internet access appears in the legislation. You may not place a tax on Internet access because the, the writers of the legislation understood that states would do this. They would see the Internet as a means of revenue. And so that's why that legislation was written. There's no jurisprudence on it because it's never been tried. It's never been tried because 49 other states for 12 years have concluded that it's simply not the way to do it. I'm concerned that I, I commend the Attorney General for his passion on this issue. It's obvious. I, I think you are well served by your Attorney General's office in this regard. I'm concerned, however, that several things were glossed over. Uh, it was said several times that we've tried every, every other way of funding this. Your neighboring states have found other ways to fund this. One of your neighboring states has attached a special fee on criminal citations so that when you get a speeding ticket or if you get cited for, for, for not for not paying child support. Any number of citations that you may pay, there's an additional fee on that. One of your neighboring states has put an additional fee on bail bonds when they're issued to pay for these sorts of things. So there are alternate ways of funding this that don't raise constitutional questions. Now, as, as an egghead, who follows the law and follows public policy, I would be fascinated to sit back in Texas and watch this constitutional fight take place, this federalist fight. Does the federal government have the right to prohibit a state from doing something like that? It would be fun to watch that play out. It would be fun for me because I would not be paying for it. But, but I would ask you, why should the citizens of your state have to pay for this litigation. The fee may only apply to people who have Internet access, but every taxpayer in Louisiana is going to have to pay for the litigation that will come from this. Why in a time of economic recession, when you're so strapped for funds, would you go down a path that so obviously is going to lead to legal problems, when in fact there are other means of accomplishing the goal as it's been stated? I want to give you an illustration. In Germany right now, they're having this huge issue. Germany wants to put up the same thing that China has. They want to put up this sort of big Internet firewall so that they can filter and so that they can block access to certain websites. The, ba the reason they want to do this, of course, is to protect the children. They want to be able to block child pornography and things like that. It's an example of an important concern, a good concern, but the wrong solution. And I would propose to you that this the bill you have before you is another case of that. It's an important concern. It's a noble goal. It's simply the wrong solution. And, and could I suggest to you that not all avenues have been considered. There are other avenues. There are other ways to fund a critical and important goal like that. I'll stop there. Madam Chairwoman and uh, members, Dwayne Cowart, uh, here today on behalf of uh, Verizon Wireless and our customers in Louisiana. Um, I'd like to reference back to a, a question first that was asked earlier about things like a, a hearing impaired fee, universal service fund, 911 fee that, that are on telecom bills today. Uh, in the Internet Tax Freedom Act, which was passed in 2007, there is a section 1107, which are specific exceptions or exemptions to that. And those certain things already in place were enumerated. Uh, so it's really not the same thing. The, 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 the federal preemption law preempted on a going forward basis. Like the others, I, um, I, I applaud uh, the Attorney General for uh, his good intentions in this regard. I'm proud to have uh, voted for him for Attorney General. Uh, I think he's a better Attorney General than he is an Elvis impersonator, and he's pretty good at that. 
Uh, Bodie White is a great American, and he comes with a, a, a wonderful, well-intentioned piece of legislation. Fighting crime, whether you do it on the ground or on the Internet, is a good thing. And it's uh, almost impossible to be against that. Unfortunately, the funding method chosen here uh, is, in our view at least, clearly prohibited uh, by federal law. The, the Tax Freedom Act has been quoted to you several times is for that a fee is for a specific privilege or benefit that's conferred. Uh, we pay taxes for a lot of things that confer benefits to us on society. Roads, public education, a cleaner environment, and fighting crime. We pay tax for that. But in my view, a fee and a specific benefit is like paying for an inspection on my car every year. And they put an inspection sticker on my window. And the fee I paid, paid for that sticker. Doesn't help anyone else, just for me. The fee I pay for a hunting license in Louisiana, so I can turkey hunt with my grandson. I get a, I get a hunting license with my name on it, and I pay a fee for it. It's a specific benefit uh, that's conferred on me. Uh, I think it was mentioned earlier, the American Legislative Exchange Council, a very respected organization of legislators nationwide, has opposed this particular piece of legislation, not for its good intentions, but for the funding mechanism. And Alec, in its opposition to this bill, um, said that it was, quote, the functional equivalent of an Internet access tax and a dubious Internet access charge. I hope, members, that you will separate the good intentions in this legislation from the unconstitutional funding mechanism uh, which has been chosen. This is not a fee to use the Internet. This is being called a fee to fight crime. We pay taxes to fight crime. And I hope you will oppose this legislation. Uh, good day. My name is Patrick Leeson. I serve as State Affairs Manager for Americans for Tax Reform. Uh, we're a nonprofit taxpayer advocacy organization. Uh, I'd like to start out by thanking Chairman Duplessis and members of this committee for the opportunity to comment on what is a very important matter. On behalf of Americans for Tax Reform, I come here today to express strong opposition to this bill. Uh, the monthly tax if, that this bill would assess, if passed, would be ostensibly for the purposes of investigating and prosecuting Internet crimes. While this is a laudable goal, there are certainly many ways to fund such an effort without resorting to a multi-million dollar tax increase in the midst of a reception. Uh, but perhaps what's most problematic about this bill, even from the tax point of the standpoint of the taxpayer, is the fact that this bill represents an attempt to circumvent federal law. The Internet Tax Freedom Act expli explicitly prevents states from enacting, uh, enacting taxes on Internet access. As such, it is clear that this bill is in violation of federal law. Calling this tax hike a fee as an attempt to bypass federal law is misleading and would invite significant and costly legal challenges for Louisiana as adopted. Uh, the Attorney General, uh, I know he has noble intentions. He claims a tax is something that only everybody pays, but this is certainly not the case if anyone's ever heard of an alcohol tax, a cigarette tax, or a property tax, and I could go on. Uh, let me add that the contracting economy in this state has presented many, many budgetary challenges for Louisiana. In such an environment, it would be foolish to pass legislation that would inevitably require the state to expend taxpayer funds to not only defend the case, but also pay plaintiff's attorney fees if the law is struck down, as Americans for Tax Reform believes it would eventually would be. All tax increases should be avoided, especially in economic downturn. But a new tax on Internet access would be particularly onerous. The Internet has been an invaluable driver of economic growth and job creation. As such, a tax placed on access to the Internet would have economically deleterious impact. Uh, also, I want to add you should never pit businesses against their customers. However, this bill would do just that thing by requiring businesses to collect an e illegal tax from their customers. Furthermore, it sets a horrible precedent. There is endless limit to the noble causes which lawmakers can claim necessitate a new tax. But let me add that Pelican State residents already work 187 days out of the year just paying for the cost of government services and regulation, and Americans for Tax Reform believes this is quite enough. If something is a priority, make it one by funding out of existing revenues. Claiming a new tax is needed is an admission that the cost to be funded by that new tax is the lowest priority on the totem pole, in fact. And let me just close by saying the Internet has survived and thrived because the government has thus far been forced to keep its hands off it. It is the, less, it's the best, last example of a truly free market left in this country, and this bill before the committee today would be a step in the wrong direction for the Louisiana economy and the online community. And I thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see, do you have questions for? Thank you. Senator Crow. 
Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm not sure if you have a copy of this uh, bill. You know, does somebody have an extra copy they can hand to? No, but but we all we all receive similar bills. I'm sure. Well, I I just had a particular line I wanted to point out to see what. If you look at the bottom of the first bill, uh, Cox Communications, uh, the FCC, obviously, that, that goes to the FCC. The franchise fee, that goes to the state, correct? The franchise fees go to local government. Franchise fees are well, designed but it stayed, to... stays within the state. It stays within the state. It's designed to pay for access to right-of-way, tearing up sidewalks, digging trenches, and things like that. Okay. And then you have the county parish tax, city tax, and state sales tax. Okay. Um, there was some discussion a while ago relative to um, the bottleneck that we have here, and that is tax versus fee or whatever. And uh, everybody's in agreement on, on what we're trying to do, but disagreeing on how we're going to get there. And we're preparing an amendment right now that, uh, before I even introduce it, I want to get your take on that. And um, uh, the amendment basically would... <clears throat> would uh, allow for uh, industry to um, add on their statements a checkoff box very much like the utility companies do that uh, would allow people who are willing to voluntarily donate uh, an amount, whatever amount they want to. Um, and <clears throat> it, I, I suppose it wouldn't be called a fee, it wouldn't be called a tax, it would be called a donation. And in fact, it may be a deductible donation. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, um, would you have uh, any of you have any any comment one way or the other about that idea? Um, it's the, as something of a general response, uh, I call my client Verizon, and uh, uh, when you or someone had mentioned this, sir, I think Senator Gotro mentioned this earlier, and I had said. What are your thoughts on that? And they said, given the take or no take, uh, collect or no collect based on a voluntary whatever, that uh, unfortunately, uh, from our end, the cost of collection and remission would far exceed a dollar twenty a year for those who chose it. And I, I don't think you want to select a method that's that inefficient. I, um, there are checkoff boxes on state income tax forms. Uh, put it there. And uh, let Treasury remit the money to the general fund. On on my utility bill, there's something similar. I don't even know what it goes to. It's called Operation Roundup, and um, it's mandatory unless you opt out. Is the way our program works. My impression from looking through the materials that I've been mailed from my utility is is that it does not raise a substantial amount of money. Uh, I would be hard pressed to be against voluntary action of any kind. Although I think that the, the AG's office has an important point, that from from planning standpoint, I'm not sure that's a very dependable source of revenue. Uh, I, I would be far more enthusiastic, I think, about attaching fees that can be scored and that can be predicted through a revenue note to something, as I mentioned earlier, that's non-controversial, such as citations and things like that. It's not that hard to go back and look and do a five-year review and see how many citations have been issued across the state, da-da-da-da-da, um, what kind of revenue that would raise. I mean, that kind of calculation could be done in an hour. Well, well certainly, you know, with a billion-dollar deficit this year, I mean, you can't call that a, a, a non-risky situation <laughs> for funding anything in the state of Louisiana. Uh, but that's what we deal with all the time. So that, that comment is sort of neutral to me. Uh, back to your comment on the uh, amount. I, in, in the amendment, we're not going to mention an amount. But we can, if it's a concern, we can say increments of five dollars or ten dollars or whatever, and the cost of maintaining that or pulling, you know, carrying out that administrative task would be covered out of that out of that fee. And I, I would imagine that a lot of people <clears throat> throughout the state would want to um, to help in that regard. And, and sure, we don't know how much is going to come in, but after a year, you can see and develop some trends, and it would be in a step in the right direction, I think. Uh, did you have a comment on? on no, I would just say uh, something. A, a fee would certainly be preferable, but this bill is is certainly not a fee in its current form. So, um, is, until we saw further details about the amendment, uh, I'd have to withhold um, comment. But I'd just like to say, moving forward w with the current bill in its form, is is also kind of a waste of time in the fact that governor's office has made it clear that they're not going to sign off on any tax increase this session. 
Is there anybody here from the industry that would like to, anybody else from the industry that would like to uh, comment on this one thing? Can I make one additional comment? Mm -hmm. uh, it was thrown out a moment ago that this might be deductible somehow. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure how you can do that well, going to well, a government just, agency. Just forget I said that, and I would just, you know. But anyway, um, is there someone else here from the uh, from the industry, uh, Cox or, or AT&T or anybody else here? Rob, would you like to comment on this? I think Rob represents them. Mm -hmm. Didn't mean to pick it Chair, down, Rob. Members, Rob Rieger again. No, that, that, it's a fair question. I think our folks are looking at this right this second. Um, Right now, Cox and other uh, cable companies already allow folks to contribute money toward PEG fees, you know, public educational, governmental channel access, you know, local um, uh, broadcast things that are put on. So there is somewhat of a precedent for doing such as that right now. You know, and that's something that in this instance the company does absorb and pass along, as I understand it. Again, we're still working all this down, and I can't give you anything ironclad at this time. Uh, but I do want to take a second, if I could, and talk about a couple of things, programs that are already out there that the, the cable community does. Uh, all of you all are, are familiar with McAfee antivirus software. It's things that run on your Internet right now, especially Senator uh, Michaud and I have children about the same age. We've kind of grown up in the Internet uh, world together. That's very important software. It's antivirus. It's anti-spam. allows you all sort of parental controls that allow you to control you know, the data that uh, comes across your computer to uh, able to monitor your children's uh, and other folks' uh, access to it. Uh, it is a very, very effective tool, and every one of our uh, clients and every one of our members has that offered as a value-added uh, feature to all their Internet access. Okay, so that's something that's there, very positive. Um, we cooperate a great deal with all law enforcement with regard to suspicious activity that may be picked up work with virtue of subpoenas and other things, cooperate to get data to help them put their cases together. You know, this is something, and these activities are things that we do, we're going to continue to do them because it's part of being a good corporate citizen. You know, we are heavily invested in this right now because safety is a matter of paramount importance to everyone in this room, and we'll continue to do that. I mean, those the McAfee Internet things, they're not cheap when they come in, but that is a service that is part of what a customer pays. You know, part and parts from free updates, from downgrades, 24-7, 365 customer service access for questions with regard to that. You know, we're doing what we can to get the word out there. Rob, uh, the industry has stepped up over the last year or two, and yes, especially sir. as we, as we um, pass legislation to better protect our kids statewide. They have really shown an interest uh, in helping and working with law enforcement, with the state, and with the Attorney General's office over the past couple of years, because they see this as a common problem, and and we commend them for that. Um, and they've even provided software applications and 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 help it behind the scenes and how better to. to track who these people are that are that are which is beyond the scope and the ability of our typical law enforcement agencies that they've been able to help in that area but you you represent AT&T uh, no sir uh, our, we represent no sir we do not represent AT&T and who, who? Cox Comcast okay. Time Warner Sudden Link well, it probably wouldn't be fair to ask you this question on an AT&T bill. Then please don't. A shot. <laughs> um, is there someone here from from AT&T but stay where you are Rob? Um, you, you had mentioned, at &T, you had mentioned that uh, the president is, is already set, and I would think that Cox, AT and T, and any of the ISPs would be willing to do like the industry, the rest of the industry, and that is step up and be proactive in trying to protect our kids. And so, it really isn't a big ask, and it really isn't a, a like we have to twist their arm to say, "Hey, look, would you mind?" putting on uh, some sort of a voluntary procedure onto your monthly to allow people to be able to, to contribute to help with this this uh, universal problem. <clears throat> but I'm looking at the AT&T bill, and it does, and I wanted to ask AT&T if you all have, Check off. There's an if you look at the AT&T bill down on the left-hand side, it says uh, telecommunications for the deaf fund. Um, <clears throat> are there other Senator Crow, if I could interrupt just for a second, just to see if I could jump ahead of this. Okay. And, Rob, while he's doing that, uh, on the Cox bill, you, yes. you said that, that you do have checkoff boxes for certain 
things. I don't see any on this particular bill, but there. I don't know that it's a check off, but I believe it's a program that we have. I don't have a specific bill on that yet, where you can charged. you can give additional money for it. Yes, sir. That's what I understand it to be. To well, talk about, yeah, if I could, on that nickel a month or the telecommunications for the deaf fund. The nickel a month was a tax that was passed back in 1990 that specifically flowed out of the Americans with the Federal Americans with Disabilities Act to allow folks to be able to all folks to be able to use uh, telephone equipment to to basically broaden the telecommunications uh, capabilities nationally. Uh, that was probably one of the very few taxes that some folks, uh, Senator Alario, and I, I think Senator Misha, when you were represented back in the old day, I know you voted for that because of the uh, – because of the the, uh, the the good that it did, and that was very much a tax. It had to raise revenue to be able to allow to do some of the things that the Attorney General would have you do uh, in this legislation, and that was specifically found to be a tax. On top of that, there's a Public Service Commission fee, a regulatory fee, uh, for folks that helps enhance that particular program. I'm sorry, Senator. Excuse Mitchell, me, I didn't he mean- voted for a tax? <laughs> Oh, it was Martini. If I told you some of the other ones that voted for it as well, it would probably shock you. But uh, I don't think you were there yet, Senator Martini. Oh, were you? Okay, my my bad memory. Anyway, that was a um, a collaboration that took years to get to get finished, and there had to be the the. Uh, the underlying underpinning that allowed us to do this. All of those types of fees and taxes are specifically allowed under federal law. You know, other things that you see on there uh, with regard to fees and taxes that are authorized by the FCC or the Public Service Commission, those are specific reservations in the Internet Internet Anti-Discrimination Act that allow for that right now. Dwayne uh, mentioned some of those in the federal law that allow that. Let me ask Dwayne. Yes, sir. The 1107 exemption you, you, you brought up a few minutes ago, does that specifically uh, would that cover a voluntary contribution? Uh, I, I don't. It, those exceptions were for fees, for fees that were already in place, um, and it was to draw a line in the sand and go like forward. Fund, for I don't think it even spoke to or was relative to uh, a voluntary contribution in, in any way. And uh, okay, no, I don't think so. All right, thank you. On the AT&T bill, and this is my last question. Um, do you know of any precedent by AT&T uh, that would allow for voluntary contributions? Uh, no, I, I know of no precedent for it. I, I would also say that without exploring this issue much further, I, I don't know that I can really comment on it. I can tell you this. Could you, I'm sorry, could you oh, state your name? For oh, the I'm home? sorry. I'm George Sutton. Uh, I represent at and I, I can say this, Senator, that one of the bigger complaints we get it, from consumers is how complicated our bills already are. I, it, I would suggest that if we're going to go to a checkoff mechanism, we, we take a look at at the income tax returns, which allows for checkoffs, and not put this on to a, a, an industry, especially one that hasn't had a chance to examine what it's going to cost, what the programming costs are. This bill is, has been reviewed and re-reviewed to try to make it understandable to the consumer. I don't have any idea what, what will happen to the bill if we, if we put a checkoff, but I would suggest to you that it's not going to be a it's not going to be a static fund that anyone can depend on because you don't know. You can say that about our state budget, too. Well, but I mean, you're trying to set up a program to uh, to for law enforcement, and law enforcement needs to be able to plan if they're going to use that money. And they're never going to know from year to year how much money they got. Right. So, okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, Senator Gautreaux? Well, you know, I laughed because it always seems like when people want to kind of cloud the air, they talk about, well, well, it's not going to be a stable source of revenue. Even the Attorney General said it himself, so did AT&T. But I'll tell you, you all have to start somewhere. There's funds. Listen, I sit on appropriations. Mike's there. We just looked at the bills that have tons of funds. Okay? Historically, over a period of time, those funds have an average balance. Okay? They receive a certain amount. You've got to start somewhere, first of all. So for people to argue about that, I think that's just a moot point. Okay? But we all have to say that we have to do something to help in this crime, whether it be AT&T stepping up to the plate, Cox Communication, okay? These young men that sat here early, I'm not sure the guys here. One thing I don't like 
it changed my mind real quick, is when someone says, oh, the governor's going to veto it. I could care less what the governor's going to do. He needs to know the legislator has a right, what, two-thirds vote to override it also. Checks and balances in government. So I hate when people come to the table, oh, well, just don't vote for it because the governor's going to veto it. That's bull. I don't know where he's at. He's not here. But you're looking at me. I okay. Know. Well, Dwayne, you understand. Okay, you brought him to the table, no doubt. No, I didn't. Okay, he's back there. But that's the fact that I don't like when someone says that. Now, he may not know that he said that and, and it implicates. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I'll apologize for that, but I just like to say I added with a qualifier in its current format, and it looks like you guys are looking to make some changes, so. You'll bet. You'll be it. Right. <laughs> State your name for the record. Uh, Patrick Police and Americans for Tax Reform. Right, and, and and listen, I'm probably one of the biggest anti-tax people. I talk to the general, and I'm not for taxes. And the question is whether it's a tax or fee. You can say what you want if it's a tax or fee. You know, that's fine, whatever. But the point is, we have a problem not only in a state, in this nation. And I applaud the Attorney General and them for stepping up to find a solution. Our governor... Says he's for, the, you know, helping our children. Well, he should have put something in the budget instead of cutting their budget so bad. That's why we're standing here today because of that. And that's a decision we make, too. Okay? And our chairman of appropriation said he would work to help do that. But I also think corporate corporate obligation, Senator, uh, let, morals, let, let me make, is let me make you sure. provide the service, let, you make money off the service, well, and I think you know it's a problem. And I'm not saying... I do. I do, but let me let me just say let me just say this. I didn't say that that was a no go. What no, no, no. I understand you. I'm not. I'm not after you. But someone said that it would be a problem. This was early, not you. AT and T. You said you'd have to get further information. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any. Y'all have been good saying. corporate partners in a lot of things. I know AT and T, Bellsoft before, so I know that. And that's why I offered to the Attorney General that everybody's got to come to the table. And I, I already told him. And I'll be honest with y'all. I might be a person that votes against taxes, but I'll tell you, if there's no solution that's uh, found within a period of time, and I don't like it saying, okay, they're out of session now, they don't worry about it. I don't want to have to come back next year and say that the general didn't work out a solution with the communication companies. Because communication companies and communication is great for information, but there's a harm that's being done to society, to our kids. And by the way, Rob, I have five kids. And by the way, I have one computer. And the only reason I know so much about it is because I researched sex crimes, did all the information on it, and learned from the Attorney General's programs of where your computer should be and what you should look for and how you should check on things. And so mine's centrally located in one spot. And when I go to bed at night, the computer goes, goes to bed at night, period. Kids go up to their rooms, go where they have to be. So there's a responsibility on the parent also. First, first and foremost, we have to take responsibility. But what they're doing is they're catching a lot of people, and I know they do it. They do it easily. But we all have to say we have to come to a solution. We can just say we're automatically against something. And I'm surprised we even got this far without having some agreement among everybody because I think um, someone talked about an uh, annual roundup and stuff. I think if you put a picture of the Internet with a kid being raped or, or being uh, abused, whatever it is, when someone sees their bell, a mom, and let's face it, most, most of the women are probably the ones writing the bill for the utility uh, bills or keeping track of the checkbook. When they're writing that check and they see that, I can reassure you, I think they'll check that box for $5, whatever it is. We talk about programming costs. We all know. Or uh, remittance of the check. You can just put the money in a, a bank account and have it drafted every, uh, every month or every six months or every two months or whatever it is. There's no, there's no cost in that. Now, there may be a cost in programming that line, which I'd like to know because that's something I think we need to know. But I sit on finance with, like Mike, and I'm committed. I was committed to the Attorney General and them to try to get him some money for the forensic account. We still haven't got it yet, but, you know, that's something we're going to try. We're in, we are in a budget crisis. So for everybody to come to the table and always talk about whether it's a tax or whether it's a fee, I don't think it's a care of a tax or a fee. It's about a moral obligation. It's about something that's hurting society. And we have to find a solution. I applaud them for at least coming to the table, just like 335. I voted against Senate Bill 335. Some people in this committee voted for it. But at least somebody came up with try to find a solution to higher education or whatever it is. And I respect them on that part. And I respect the Attorney General for this. And I respect you all for saying we're not sure what it's going to cost. But to say it's going to hamper and it's going to cause problems, you're making money, guys. Not you, you're a tax reform person. But, Dwayne, your companies you represent are making money off the Internet. 
a small percentage of what they're making is not even going to them, and I think people are willing. I'm one, and I raise my hand, I'm willing to check the box to say I'll, I'll pay the dollar twenty. I'll pay five dollars a year, okay? Some people may not be able to afford five dollars a year. But I promise you, if it happens to their kid, they're going to check off that box that costs five dollars a year. And let me tell you, there's not a person in this room that don't know somebody that's been raped, molested, or abused. There's not a person in this room that knows someone that has cancer. So you can't tell me when you put something on a box and the Attorney General goes on the radio and saying, look, we have a roundup at the beginning of the year, he starts advertising 30 years, please check your box to donate $5. It's going to be on your phone bills, your electricity bills, whatever it is, to go to this fund to help um, Internet crimes. And the first year he might only get $400,000. Next year he might get a million. Next year it might be another million. By the time you take an average of the three years, he'll know how much money he has. But it's a start, General. And that's why we always start. We have to start. I know, yeah, y'all can tap me for the quiet, but it's a commentary today. Um, Senator, I just add. I think uh, I've been quiet in this committee a long time, well, uh, Madam Chair. Quiet, uh, I think uh, Nick. I think everyone agrees there's a broad and uh, grave and serious problem that needs to be addressed. Um, but it's a, it's an issue that should be a concern of society as a whole and the broad populace. And as such, it shouldn't. The cost of addressing this shouldn't be borne by uh, taxpayers who just internet, who use did the internet. You, did loan. you just hear what I said? Yes. A voluntary checkoff box, a promotion by him with the money he does get to promote stuff like that on a radio. You're not, you're not for that? Voluntarily. I'm going to voluntarily I tax myself. Oh. I choose that as the person. You're not for that? We agree with things such, such as that all the time, such as tax me more funds, people. So um, you would agree with it, right? You'd be behind I'd it. I'd have to look at the details a little more. No, 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 no. Listen, we don't politically answer. I, I have to I, look at the details. You either for a checkoff box to help people, or you just against it, period, sir. I think if people want to, if there's a fund that people want to send checks into, donate to, I'm, I don't know about if the utility bill is where that should be precisely, but there should be some mechanism where people can voluntarily uh, give to this cause for sure. I just don't. I'm not certain that that the utility bill is the proper place for that. Okay, thank you. We're gonna we're gonna move on now. We're gonna have Senator Martini. Can we can we talk about the bill? Yes, can I think we have um I mean I I mean, nobody nobody disagree. I mean and, and with all due respect Senator Gotro the question is whether you like it or not the question is whether or not we can legally do this. Right. And my my question was going to be to Senator Crow while well, well, I'm getting there. Okay. I I don't have as long a speech as you have but I but I have a question for Senator Crow. And I guess maybe to Senator Michel. Do we really want to go down this slope where we start saying where there's a problem, we haven't now, you know, and, and, and don't look, these are this is a legitimate problem. I'm not sure that if, the, if, 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 if you check it off and you send the five dollars in, where's that going to go? Does that go to, does that go to, does that definitely go to the Attorney General? Does it go to, into our general fund? Does it go to, uh, and, and when it goes, I mean, the last I looked at the appropriations process, it's not like, if somebody sends them four hundred thousand dollars, that that Senator Michel and his committee are going to say, well, we're just going to pretend like that doesn't exist. That's going to be another amount of money that they're going to consider when they're setting the budget for next year. Uh, I'm disappointed that the governor didn't put something in his in his budget. To, I mean, I, look, I've heard about the drastic cuts that, that that were made to the attorney general's office, and I think we as a legislature have to deal with that. We still come back to the original question: if and is it a tax or is it a fee? And if we make it voluntary, I don't know what it is after that. Is it, is it, it, does it become a fee? Is there such a thing as a voluntary fee or is it just a donation? I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm, there's way too much confusion out there right now. So I, I would love to hear you explain, uh, hear from you and Senator Misha as to whether or not we can do this. And if we do do it, is it, is it, is it still a, assuming that it is a fee? Is it still a fee if we make it voluntary? That's my question. Um, we have a we have an amendment by Senator Crow. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. In, in light of the discussion and where we are now in the crossroad here, it looks to me like uh, if we amended this bill in such a way that it would provide for uh, a donation a checkoff box, uh, that would be. Um, Probably the only way we can get this bill out of committee. Um, Jerry, would you take a moment to explain the amendment? 
The uh, amendment number one would simply be a change in the title to delete language relative to a fee to simply say we would to authorize donations by Louisiana consumers with Internet access to the fund and to provide for the content of the billing statement to the consumers. On page one, line 11, it would delete the language a fee equal to 15 cents per month and simply say money donations made. Uh, on page one, line 12, it would uh, insert a sentence that would simply say each Internet service provider shall provide for the submission of donations on the billing statement made on each Louisiana consumer account, and then go on to say donations. And basically, the rest of it would, be, would change language from fees to donations. However, there would be a substantive uh, deletion of the material found from... Uh, Pit line 14 after the word revenue period, deleting the remainder of the line, deleting lines 15 and 16, and on line, page 2, deleting lines 1 and 2, all which relate to liability, the lack of liability for the collection of the fee since it would no longer be required. So take that language out and then simply permit donations to be made. Bottom line on everything would be uh, it would permit donations regardless of amount. It would require the providers to include on the billing statement some sort of mechanism to permit that donation to be made. Uh, otherwise, uh, would take away the lack of liability for the failure to do it. And otherwise, uh, pending, I think the other, the treasurer was still pending, right? Yes. We, we have haven't adopted. adopted. Okay, so as of right now, it would still go, the donations would go to the Internet service provider and who would then have the responsibility of getting it to the Department of Revenue. Uh, and, and the 3% administrative fee is still in the bill. All right, we have an amendment offered by Senator Crow. Do we have an objection? Good. All right, we have an objection. Uh, Secretary will call the roll. Senator Crow? Yes. Yes. Senator Lario? Senator Gotro? Senator Gotro votes yes. Senator Martini? No. Senator Martini votes no. Senator Micho? No. Senator M Martini votes no. No. Vote. Senator Duplessis? No. Senator Duplessis votes no. The vote is two yeas and three nays. Thank you. Um, we have, I tell you what, we all know what the issue is. Can we have Representative Bodie come to close? Thank you, Representative Bodie. So as I understand, that amendment that was just offered did not pass, right? Correct. So the bill is in its current form. Correct. I, I've tried to, to do some calculations over there on my calculator on my phone and on paper, but the, the numbers are so big, it's, I'm having a hard time. Ten cents per month produces almost $4 million a year for Internet providers. That's what that means. That's $0.10 cents a month produces $4 million a year. My Internet bill is over $40 a month. Multiply that by 12, and I think you're starting to see the magnitude of what the revenues that are collected off the Internet. I do not think it's too much for them to add a line on to the billing that is for 10 cents that the consumer pays. They do not pay it. My 75-year-old mother would pay it. <clears throat> I think it's almost a grievous, but this is surely to be over a billion dollar industry in our state to say that they have no resolve, they cannot come to the table, they cannot offer any resolution to these problems. They themselves are not the criminals, 
but they are providing that service. They are making dollars off of every constituent in our district that has this service. I do not think it's too much to come up with 10 cents to give the Attorney General the opportunity to fight these crimes. And I guess that's about all I have to say. I'll let the uh, Attorney General Thank you. Close. I think we're going to end with your ending statement. Um, Madam Chairman, may I? No, because do I don't want to, I do not want a show here. It's over. Okay, I'm, I'll eat my loaf of bread. Thank you. That's what it costs you. Thank you. Um, Representative Bodie has closed on his bill. Is there a motion? There's a motion to defer House Bill 3569. Any objection? Hearing none, the bill is deferred. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Members.